Hello, in this section of the TI-89 tutorial, we're going to focus on two very important things uh, to understand before you can really start to use this calculator well. One of them is uh, what this catalog button is all about. We'll talk about that. And the other thing is we're going to begin to dive into this math menu we've introduced a couple of sections ago, and we're going to begin to use some of the, the more basic functions in there to sort of give you an idea. Now the first thing I want to say, and I think I've said this before, is that obviously this calculator can do so much that there aren't enough buttons on it to have some, you know, have to have every function that you might that you might use. So you've got your common things like the square root and the parentheses and you know, negative, uh, make a negative num number, sine, cosine, tangent, pi, and things like that. But as you might guess, there's 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 hundreds of additional things that you would need. You don't have enough buttons. So if you are having a hard time finding the function that you need to do or that you need to perform and you've already looked in the math menu, which we've sort of introduced a minute ago, uh, and you're not finding it, then you really need to dive into the catalog menu. So before I can show you that, we turn on the calculator, we're presented with the screen, if you have a titanium anyway, go ahead and hit enter when it's on home and it's going to take you uh, straight into the screen here. So the first thing we need to do to go and explore that is just hit the catalog button here and inside of here you're going to see every single function that this calculator can do in alphabetical order. So if you're completely lost and you have no idea where to find the function that you need uh, in the calculator, just go ahead and hit catalog and look in here. Now notice that there's, there's just a lot of entries here so you can scroll down and and see them all. One thing to note is that um, if you want to skip around, like let's say you know your function begins with an L, then you can just go over here and hit L. So H I J K L, that's this button right here. You don't have to hit alpha or anything, just go ahead and hit this button and it's going to take you directly to the L. So when you're in the, ca in the catalog uh, menu, you can just hit any key on this screen here that has a letter above it and it's going to take you. If you hit the M here, it'll take you to the M's. If you hit the I's, it'll take you to the I's. You don't have to hit alpha. Usually whenever you want to engage one of these letters, you have to hit the alpha button to make it to make a letter actually pop up. But in the catalog menu, it knows that when you're trying to press one of these buttons like Z, it's going to take you to all of the um, things with Z. So let's go back to A and we'll uh, just look at a quick example. So the first one here is absolute value. This happens to be a function that you can also get to in the math menu, but it's, it's listed here in the catalog menu as well. You can think of the catalog as the absolute master index of everything the calculator can do. In other words, it encompasses everything in the math menu plus all of the other functions of the calculator that may be a little bit more obscure. If you want to use this function, when it's highlighted here, you just hit enter and it'll put ABS, absolute value, on, on the stack. You can put, you know, negative five here, close the parentheses, hit enter and it's going to return the absolute value. Notice it puts absolute value bars around my number here because I've got the, uh, you know, the TI-89 is just great about representing things like that. So it's useful for, for things like that. Now I'll just go ahead and show you just because I already mentioned it. If you go into the math menu, second function math, inside the number menu, go ahead and hit the right arrow, uh, the very second thing in that menu is absolute value. So you see the math menu really is usually usually where you're going to go to try to find what you need but there are some um, functions that are not in any other menu other than the catalog because the catalog is the master index and one of those is the logarithm see here in blue we have the natural logarithm that's base e logarithm but if you want to take a regular logarithm to base 10 it is nowhere else in this calculator other than the catalog menu so if I go to L like this and I just go ahead and merrily scroll down. So I've got LI, there's natural log right there, see? So notice that we have natural log in here also. It's also a button on the calculator. And there's log. So if I just hit regular log, that's base 10. And let's do it. Let's just take a, a log of base 10, of the number 10. We should get a value of 1 back because it's base 10. 10 raised to the 1 power is going to give me 10. So if you can't find what you're looking for in the math menu and you can't find what you're looking for on a button on the calculator, then it's gets got to be in the catalog menu. And that's probably why they put the button front and center right here. You won't use it that much, but when you are hunting for something, it's going to be indispensable. One more thing I'll show you. Let me go ahead and hit A to get back up here to A. Is that there are a lot of other things in this catalog menu that uh, really you won't even that you probably won't use unless you're programming the thing. If you're actually trying to write a program for it, which this calculator is fully programmable. 
for instance, the archive command. That's something that you wouldn't use unless you were trying to program uh, the thing. Let's go over to Z. So here, Q R S T U V W O. It looks like Z is up here in its own button. So we'll hit Z. So you see, we've got zoom box. These are these are things that we use when we graph um, equations, and they're up here in the in the graph area up here. We can look in the menus here, but they're all available here as well because you're going to be able to use those either in your programs or it's just giving you the opportunity to, to put them on the command line and use them without hunting through a menu. So basically anything the calculator can do is going to be in the count in, in the catalog uh, button. So if you're a little bit lost with where it is, just go in there and start hunting around for it. You know, hit the letter um, and, uh, you know, take a limit, you know, least common multiple. You, know, you can just kind of play around with it and see what's in there. But most of the time, you're either going to have a button for the thing or it's going to be in the math menu. And those are the most common things. If you get stuck, then you go into the catalog menu. Or if you're programming the calculator, the uh, catalog menu is very handy as well. Now, let me go ahead and escape out of that and clear this. And I want to begin to go and talk a little bit more about the math menu. Uh, we talked about it as an overview in the first section. Um, it's got it broken down into a lot of different categories. If you're dealing with angles, you've got things in here with angles, you can hit escape here. If you're dealing with matrices, you can do your determinants, you can do your row reductions, your transpose, your identity matrix, there's a lot of different things there. If you're dealing with complex numbers, you've got real and imaginary and things like that. We're going to go through all of these as we go. And even when you get into calculus, it's got things like integration and differentiation. But for now, we are not going to do anything fancy. We're just going to drill down through the very first menu, which is the number menu. Now, everything in the number menu, in my opinion, you probably won't use too much on a day-to-day -day basis unless you're programming the calculator. But I think it's a good menu to go through because it's something everyone can understand to teach you how to use the menus. Uh, you're not going to have any trouble understanding any of these things here. And, um, you know, it is useful if you're programming the thing. So we're going to go through these now. And in subsequent sections, when we tackle different areas of math, we're going to go in and look at these other menus here in the math menu. So the first one is... Uh, exact. That is going to be used if you have a decimal and you want to convert it back to a fraction. A lot of times you'll do a calculation and you know you'll you'll get a decimal. Let's say the answer you get is 0.25. Now you all know what fraction that is, but if you were to take the answer that you get and dump it inside the exact uh, guy here, then it, the calculator will come back and say, okay, that's one fourth. And so it's pretty useful if you're doing a long calculation and you get a number like you know. Uh, uh, let's just go back to the, uh, well, actually, it's, it's already highlighted here, you see, because it puts the same guy up here. So I can go in here and just edit the value that's really in here. It's a good thing. So we'll go ahead and go backspace like that. So let's say we get exact of, you know, uh, 1.45. Let's see what it does with that. In that case, it calculates that 29 over 20, the fraction 29 over 20, is equal to this decimal. So it's really useful. Sometimes you want to keep it, everything in terms of fractions and that works out great. Sometimes you end up having to convert to a decimal and then you want to go back to a fraction. Uh, so that's handy there. Let me go ahead and clear these out. Uh, back to the math menu, second function math. That's the first one. The second one is the absolute value. We've already talked about that. You can put a number or an expression or an argument in there and it's going to return the absolute value. Below that is, is a rounding function. And it works just like you would think, except that you need to specify the number of decimal places you want to round to. So let's say I have the number 4.2587, and I want to round it to one decimal place. So I have to tell it how many decimal places to round to. And I go ahead and hit Enter here, and it's going to be 4.3, because I told it that. Now if I go in here and edit this guy, let me go ahead and back and backspace over here and say I'm going to do that and round it to three decimal points. Then it rounds it to three decimal points and it rounds it in just a normal fashion. So that's a useful thing. Not something that you probably use every day unless you were programming it, but if you were programming the thing, it could be very useful. Uh, let's go back into the math menu. Uh, under that is our two functions, uh, I part and F part. I is for integer part and F is for fractional part. So if I go to integer part and I put a number 25.698 and just close it off and hit enter it's going to return 25 basically uh, integer part does exactly what it says it just returns the integer part of whatever number you put in here if I go over here instead of 25 and make it you know 525 then it's going to return 525 because that's the integer part 
Now, if I go back in here, you might guess if I go to the fractional part uh, of 525.698, then it's going to return only the decimal part that comes after the decimal point. So not something that you're going to use too much in your math classes, but if you're writing a program, it may be very likely that you're calculating an answer and you may only care about the integer part of the answer. And so you would use that function. Okay, under that, we have floor and ceiling, which are related almost to, to the rounding function, but they're even a little bit simpler. If in the floor command you put 56.2, uh, then it's going to basically round down all, all the time to, to the integer lower. So if I go back and edit this just to show you an example, so 56.2 gives 56. What if I make it 56.9? it's still going to return 56 because it's going to the floor. In other words, no matter what the decimal is, it's always looking at the, the lower integer down there. Now, you can compare that to the ceiling, which is, as you might expect, let me go back up here, as you might expect, for the ceiling, if I put 56.9, it's always going to go to the next integer, so it's going to return 57. And if I go and change, you know, 56.9 and make it 56.1 and take the ceiling, it's also going to return 57. So floor and ceiling are useful. If you really don't really care about the decimal point so much, you just, you just need to be consistent on if you're looking at the lower integer or the upper integer, and you don't care so much about rounding in the proper way. If you care about true rounding, then you need to use the rounding uh, function that we just talked about. All right, let's go back and look under that. Now, the next one, number eight, sine, is really just used to return if it's a negative or positive number. So if you put 25 in there and hit enter, it's going to return the number one, positive one, which means this is a positive number. If I go in here and put in negative 25 like that and hit enter, it's going to return negative one. So it's just telling you the sign of whatever argument you put in here, whatever number, expression, or whatever it is. And again, it's not something you're going to use too much because you already know by looking at it if it's negative or positive. But if you're programming this calculator, those, those functions can be useful because when you get an answer, you might only care if it's negative. You might want to print a message on the screen if it's negative. And so you can use it to test for that. All right, so we'll go down below number eight for sine. And you have, let's just go ahead and look at the rest of these guys here. Uh, you've got uh, under sign, we've got mod and remain. And these are two really obscure functions. You probably are, are never going to use them in everyday use. But basically, these two functions tell you what the remainder is of, of when you divide two numbers. So if you go mod, if you go 10, comma, 3, then it's going to assume that you're trying to take 10 and then divide it by 3, and it's only going to tell you the remainder. So if I hit enter, uh, if you think about it, 10 divided by 3 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. And then you have a remainder of 1 to give you 10. So it's just going to return remainder of 1. If I go and say uh, do a mod of 10, comma 2, it should return 0 because 10 divided by 2 is 5 with no remainder at all. So there's a remainder of 0 there. Now, you basically use the mod function uh, when you have a positive number over here on the right when you have a positive number over, here, over there on the right. Now, there's another uh, guy here called remain, and mod and remain actually use different algorithms inside. So basically, if you have a positive number for the second argument here, you'd use the first one, the, the mod uh, function. If you had remain, then you would, uh, you would use that one if, it, if you had a negative number. So if I were gonna do negative three, so 10 divided by negative 3 and go ahead and hit enter, you're going to get the correct remainder of 1 because 10 divided by negative 3 should be negative 3 because negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 with a remainder of 1. Now the reason that there's two different functions is because they're behind the scenes are doing something different. Let's say I put in here, just for giggles, let's say I accidentally put a positive number here, 10 and positive 3. Notice up here it returned 1. If I hit enter here, it's in this case also going to return one and it's also going to give me the right answer. But in some cases, in some cases, not this case, if I put a positive number in here and use the remainder uh, function, it'll actually give you the wrong answer. So these functions are pretty obscure. You're not going to really use them all that much unless you're programming the calculator. But the rule of thumb is, is if you have your second number 
what you're dividing uh, by is a positive number, then you're going to use the mod to give you the remainder. And if it's a negative number, you should use the remainder uh, function. And that's just sort of the rule of thumb. I'm going to go ahead and move on because these are honestly pretty obscure functions you probably won't use too much. Uh, the next one is least common multiple. So the least common multiple is something you learn in algebra. And if you've gone beyond algebra, you've gotten so used to least common multiple that, that it, um, it, it's become second nature. But if you put this on the stack and you put two numbers in here, let's say 4 and 6, and you close the parentheses, then it's going to give you a 12. What this means is this is the lowest number that both of these numbers you put in here can divide into. Uh, 12 divided by 4 is 3 and 12 divided by uh, 6 is 2. So they can divide evenly. It's the lowest number that both of these numbers can divide into evenly is the bottom line. If I change it to uh, let's say 2 and 6 then the least common multiple is 6 because this is the smallest multiple so to speak of both of these numbers that can be divided evenly so 2 can go into 6 an even number of times and you know without a decimal and 6 can go into 6 an even number of times without the decimal so it's just returning the smallest value that both of these guys can be divided into in other words it's a multiple of both of these numbers it happens to be the smallest one that 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 happens to be a multiple of both of these numbers is a different way to say it now if you clear those out and go back to the math menu then underneath least common multiple is greatest common divisor greatest common divisor so if you put that on the stack and put uh, 10 comma uh, let's do 20 greatest common divisor and hit enter then the answer is 10 because this one is returning what is the largest number that can be divided into both of these numbers an even number of times the largest divisor that can be divided into both of those numbers an even number of times so if I go back and edit that and maybe I change this one to 5 comma 20 this is the largest number that can be divided into both of these guys let's do something a little bit different let's say I had uh, 64 and let's say it was you know 36 and hit enter the answer is 4 because 4 is the largest number that can go into both of these numbers in other words it can it can be divided into both of these numbers uh, evenly because you know 4 can go into 64 a whole number of times and 4 can go into 36 an even number of times so greatest common divisor and least common multiple one of them is you know what's the largest number can be divided into these two numbers evenly and the other one is what's the smallest multiple of the two numbers that you provide to the guy so pretty basic math definitions the calculator can do them you're not going to be using them too much but you never know uh, okay the next one is root the next one is root and this is one that you probably will use quite a bit so if you go and put this on the stack uh, basically it allows you to take square roots of course but it lets you take uh, any kind of root a third root or a fourth root or a fifth root so what you want to do is go ahead and put the number that you want to take the root of and you have to tell it what kind of root are you taking is it a square root or what so if we put a two in there that's going to basically tell it we want to take a square root now we have a square root button on the calculator I'm just using this to, to demonstrate you hit enter and it's going to put the 2 up here telling you that it's a square root. We're taking the square root of 4. We're going to get 2. Now if I change this and uh, maybe I put, uh, let's put 8 in here. And let's change it from a square root to a cubed root. So if we take the cube root of 8, we're also going to get 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 uh, is 8. And so you can go in here and play with this. If you put 16 in here and take the cube root of 16, you're going to get uh, something here now the calculator here has actually gone and done the calculation and found out that there, there's not a pure number that you can take the cube root of 16 uh, to get uh, but you have you have something else here that it can be simplified to show now if you put a 2 here taking the square root of 16 you'll get 4 because 4 times 4 is 16 and if you go in here and do like 64 and take something like the fourth root of 64 then you'll get 2 times the square root of 2. So you see it's very, very smart. It goes in and it figures out if it can take a pure number, and if it can't give you a pure number as an answer, it'll go ahead and simplify it. And if you actually do a factor tree 
of 64 and break it all down, you'll find out that the answer is 2 times the square root of 2. You put a 3 in here, you'll get a pure root of 4 because 4 times 4 times 4 does give you 64. So that's a pretty useful one. A lot of times you have, maybe you want to take the fifth root of something or the sixth root of something. You can certainly do it by hand, but you know, calculator's here to help you out. If we go in the math menu, in the number menu, let's see what else we have. Underneath root. That's actually it. So we have exact value to convert to fractions from decimals. We have absolute value, just like you'd think. We can round numbers. We can take the uh, integer part, the fractional part. We can basically go up to the next higher number with floor. We can go down to the next lower number with ceiling. We can have a function that returns the sign of the number. These two guys are basically used to return the remainder. You use the top one when you're dividing by a positive number and you use the bottom one when you're dividing by a negative number. Very, very uh, likely that you won't use these too much anyway. Least common multiple and greatest common divisor we talked about in detail and how to take the nth root of a, of a number. A lot of calculators will have an nth root button on the calculator, but there isn't one here, so they just give you the function. And then, of course, we talked about the catalog menu, which is the master menu of the calculator. All of those functions that we just talked about, uh, for instance, if you wanted greatest common factor, you could just go hit G down here, EFG, hit G, there's, or I'm sorry, greatest common divisor. If you wanted least common multiple, you could just hit L right there, and there's least common multiple. So you see the catalog really does encompass everything. If you wanted the root function, hit R, and then go down here, and eventually we should come to the root function. So if you forget where something is, but you know your calculator can do it, just go in the catalog menu and use that. I'm Jason. I think this was a very important, very good section. Learn how to use the math menu, the number menu in there, the catalog menu, and uh, we'll go on from here and learn how to really manipulate expressions and go into algebra and calculus and trig and really learn how to unlock the power of this calculator.